Hello and welcome back to the second of Sumo Digital's game development tutorials for beginners. The lockdown is still keeping most of us indoors, so there's never been a better time to try developing your own video games. We're still keen to share our passion for game development, so let's get back to it. We're using GameMaker Studio 2 from YoYo Games, which you should already have set up and ready to go from last time. We tried to keep things really simple in the first tutorial, with a shoot 'em up based on the adventures of Agent 8. This time we're going to attempt something a little more ambitious, but we're still sticking with flying objects as we move the action to outer space. This tutorial maps quite well to the Space Invaded level from the original Spider game, but with obvious influences from classic arcade games like Asteroids. Agent 8 finds himself in near-Earth orbit, where a set of asteroids threatens the safety of friendly astronauts. Like many classic arcade games, everything will wrap around the playing area, disappearing off one side of the screen and reappearing on the other. Agent 8 will run around the surface of the asteroids, leaping onto each asteroid in turn to detonate an explosive and eliminate the threat. At the core of each asteroid, there will be a precious gemstone which must be collected and returned to the lab for analysis. All this would be easy if it wasn't for the flaming meteorites which will bring Agent 8 to a fiery end if he doesn't look where he's going. We'll call this game Sky High Spy and pick a backdrop for the final game which shows the curved surface of the Earth looming beneath the action. So that's our design. Just like last time, the video contains a link for downloading all the resources associated with this tutorial. This includes worksheets that take you step by step through the creation of the game, as well as all the sprites and sound effects required to make it. But before you rush off and get started, we'll review some of the concepts relevant to this tutorial in advance. We're doing a lot more with angles in this game, so it's important that you have a good understanding of how they work in GameMaker. Like GameMaker's coordinates, they may not work quite the way you expect. Unlike on a compass, an angle of zero degrees in GameMaker corresponds to a horizontal direction across the screen towards the right. From here, angles increase anti-clockwise around the circle. So 90 degrees is upwards, 180 degrees is to the left, and 270 degrees is downwards. It's important that you know this, as we're going to take advantage of the way that GameMaker's angles work to help us get Agent 8 walking and flying in this game. You may already be wondering why all of Agent 8's sprites in this tutorial are facing sideways. They've been created in this way so that the starting appearance of the sprite aligns with an angle of zero degrees in GameMaker. This means that when we rotate the sprite using set instance rotation, it will continue to match GameMaker's angles, with 90 degrees facing upwards, 180 degrees to the left, and so forth. Nonetheless, set instance rotation only changes the appearance of an instance, and its direction of movement is controlled independently by the set direction variable action. Setting the direction on its own changes an instance's direction of movement, but not its appearance, so it would move in one direction while facing another. So in order to get Agent 8 flying around the screen in the direction he's facing, we'll need to align his sprite with zero degrees in GameMaker, and then change both the instance's appearance and movement direction at the same time. Getting Agent 8 walking around the asteroids is actually slightly simpler as we don't need to change his movement direction at all. We'll just offset the origin of his walking sprite to match the midpoint of the asteroid and rotate the instance while playing an animation. It's surprisingly effective and means that Agent 8 can simply follow the position of an asteroid to make him appear as if he is attached to it. Before you get started, I also want to introduce the concept of variables. Every instance has a set of built-in variables which control the way it behaves, and you've already come across some of these. For example, the X and Y variables control the horizontal and vertical positions of an instance in the room. You can think of a variable as being a bit like a box with a label on it. If you have something that you might need to use later, then you can store it in a box and use its label to find it again when you need it. Some boxes, like X and Y, have already been created for you and have a specific purpose but others can be made and named for yourself as you go along. It's not just numbers that you can put in these boxes either. GameMaker's variables can be used to store whole numbers, decimal numbers and text as well. Understanding variables is particularly useful in GameMaker 
as many actions directly correspond to a specific variable. For example, the set instance rotation action simply sets a variable called image underscore angle. Similarly, set direction variable sets a variable called direction. You'll see these variable names popping up occasionally in other actions, so it's good to understand what they do. As a final note, this means that the assign variable action can actually be used to replace many of GameMaker's actions if you already know the name of the variable that controls the behavior you're interested in. For example, assigning a value to the image angle variable will have exactly the same effect as a set instance rotation action. OK, you're all set to start working on the game. Follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the worksheet provided, and I'll see you back here for a debrief once you've reached the end. Good luck. OK, so all being well, you should have a working version of your game that looks a bit like this. I've also added some additional levels to my version and made it so you have to collect all the remaining gems before you can proceed to the next level. You should now have a better understanding of how angles work in GameMaker and how setting both the rotation of the sprite and the direction of movement can be used to make something fly around the screen in a convincing way. A nice extension of this behaviour can be quickly added to your game by editing the step event to the Flying Agent 8 object. Just drag in a set point direction action and use the position of the mouse, stored in the mouse X and mouse Y variables, to change the direction of movement. Give this a play and Agent 8 will now point and move towards the mouse position. You can imagine a different kind of game where this could be used to make the player shoot projectiles towards the mouse position, but we'll remove it from our game for now and look at something more appropriate to this game's design. I'd like to add some particle trail effects to the game, which I think work really well in games like this. Nonetheless, GameMaker's ready-made particles aren't quite right for the graphical style of this game. GameMaker does have a more sophisticated particle system, but I'll show you a very simple approach which will give you some insights into how particle systems actually work. So I've created a particle object and assigned it the particle sprite included in the resources. There's nothing special about this sprite, it's simply a circle which is partly transparent. I began by creating a variable called spread in the create event of this object. The value of this variable is randomized between 0.5 and 1, and then used to set both the size and alpha transparency of the instance. I then set the instance color before randomly moving it a few pixels away from its starting position. Randomness is a key part of particle effects and helps make them look less artificial. Next, I created a step event in which I gradually reduced the alpha while increasing the size of the instance. This will mean that the larger the particle gets, the more transparent it is, a bit like a cloud of smoke. I also check for when image alpha is less than or equal to zero, as this means the particle is invisible and should be destroyed. We can now create instances of this particle in the step event of the flying agent 8 object. Note that this creates a new particle instance in every single frame of the game. In an identical way, I've created a separate white particle to add as a trail for the asteroid pieces as well. I hope you'll agree that this adds an additional level of polish to our finished game and brings out the playfulness in the controls too. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our second tutorial and I look forward to you joining us again for the third and final programming adventure with Agent 8. Bye-bye.